her team. It is now my pleasure to turn the conference over to Andrew Kroos, Manager of Marketing Services. Please go ahead, sir. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. We're happy to have you join us. Today in our webinar series, we have Chris McKelman, who is Manager of our Mining Services Division. They are responsible for working with our customers, consulting with them to really uh, essentially, as the title says, making the best better, getting the most out of the modular mining systems that have been purchased on site, and working with customers to tailor those to the unique needs of their operations. As always, um, quick legal notice. For those of us that uh, are joining us that uh, aren't aware, Modular Mining is a, a global operation operating throughout the world, essentially anywhere there's mining. We have a range of products, um, the four main pillars being Dispatch, our fleet management system, which has been a, a leader in optimizing uh, powered haulage and mining since 1979. ProVision, our machine guidance system, which uses high precision GPS to give operator assistance for uh, shoveling and dozing operations as well as drilling. MineCare, our real-time mine maintenance system. And MineAlert, our safety management tools that includes things like monitoring speed, fatigue, and giving collision avoidance uh, awareness to operators. All of these systems work on top of a, a infrastructure network uh, wireless network. We resell a master link network but can work with others as well. And the systems are implemented using our support services with that expertise on site. Now supporting all of this, as mentioned earlier, is our consulting services and, and the mining services division that really help you get the most out of the system. The modular system is used in over 225 systems throughout the world, and we're running 18 of the 20 largest mines in the world. For the miners joining us today, I'm, I'm sure you'll probably see that your particular company's uh, logo listed there, as, as we are used by just about all of the major mining houses. At this point, I'll turn it over to Chris. Chris, thank you for joining us today, and I look forward to hearing you present who Mining Services is and the case studies at the end. Over to you, Chris. Yeah, thank you very much, Andrew, for that introduction. So my name is Chris McKelman, Manager for Modular's Mining Services Division. I'm going to start by talking a little bit about our vision and strategy, and ultimately the consulting services that we offer are, are intended to, to maximize the value for our customers. Uh, now when we talk about making the best better, uh, really we're talking about making our customers better. Continuous improvement is something that uh, you, can, you can do forever. Once you get to a certain level, there are always incremental improvements that you can make. And so the services that we offer leverage the really powerful tools that we've got in the form of our, our dispatch or mine care or provision products. Uh, we leverage these tools for continuous improvement at, uh, at mines. So our, really our, our objective is to make uh, customers as, as happy as they can be uh, and make them happy because they're satisfied with the, the value they're getting from their systems. Uh, very often the, the last step, uh, once you've installed the hardware, once you've got the software configured, uh, is getting people to use those systems. Uh, and so we offer a series of consulting services to, to enable that, to unlock that value. Now the services that we offer are very much data driven. So when we're performing an analysis, it's not anecdotal or based on hearsay. Uh, we have access to the best data in the industry around equipment performance, around operator performance. Uh, so we're able to make very powerful, incisive observations and uh, conclusions about what's going well and what's not going well and where the areas for improvement may lie. So while our approach to performance is certainly data-driven, actually extracting that value, actually achieving that performance, very often relies on a human focus. So a lot of the services that we offer really are less about analysis and are more about uh, helping people to use these relatively complicated systems. So our, we've got a data-driven analytical side, but we've also very much got a, a human-focused approach to implementation. 
Our key competitive advantage is really our deep product expertise. There are lots of consultants out there, lots of continuous improvement expertise. Uh, where we have an advantage is our tight linkage with our, our products. So we understand the data in our systems better than anyone else, and we can do things uh, even beyond what's there right now. So if we're trying to solve a problem uh, and the data we've got at our disposal is not necessarily what we need, uh, we can actually work with our support people to extend the data that's collected. So once we've asked the questions, we can make the product do things it didn't do before uh, if that's what's required to solve a problem. So that deep product expertise, that tight linkage with our support personnel really is an advantage above and beyond everyone else. The other advantage we've got is global exposure. We're working with that, that list of mining companies from a few slides ago. Uh, we're working all over the world in all the major mining areas at the biggest mines in the world. So we've had an opportunity to, to be exposed to a lot of the problems that these mines face. Uh, so more so even than any one company, even in a, mi in a major mining company, uh, we've had a lot of exposure to a lot of different situations and a lot of problems. Now, when we're addressing those problems, we bring to bear a local presence. We have consultants in each of our major mining markets working out of our regional offices. And so these people speak the language, they're in the same time zone, and most of the time they, they've been to your mine before. Uh, so they've got, uh, they're able to deliver a continuity uh, and able to really uh, maintain uh, a local presence and, and maintain a local solution to, to your problems. So this is a third uh, competitive advantage. And like the rest of Modular, we're very much committed to customer satisfaction. So we will do whatever it takes uh, to make our customers happy. And very often, that's as a result of uh, improving safety, improving productivity or efficiency. Uh, services are a great way to unlock that, that last bit of value. So today, my objective is going to be to give you an overview of some of our main services that we offer for consulting. And then I'll provide a few examples where we've applied these in the field. So my, my first example here uh, of a service we offer is a benefits analysis. And so these services are offered more or less in chronological order. Probably one of the first things we would do uh, would be a benefits analysis. And this is a service that we offer to prospective customers uh, before or after the sale of a system. And what we can do is help to build the business case. Uh, based on our experience at other mine sites, we can provide insight into where the value is likely to come from, uh, whether it's optimized haulage, whether it's improving meal breaks or shift change. Uh, there are a lot of different places that benefits can accrue, but the, the story is never the same at, at each mine. Uh, so we can highlight areas where we expect the improvement to take place. And we've got a lot of experience dealing with whatever data sources are out there, uh, very often before a mine purchases, purchases a fleet management system, uh, they work with a homegrown system, whether it's an access database or Excel, or they might be working with a third-party fleet management system or OEM data from systems like VIMS or StateX or DDEC. Uh, so there are a lot of bodies of knowledge or bodies of information out there already, typically, that allow us to drill down and make reasonable estimates of the types of improvements we're likely to see. So we'll build, we can be part of building a data-driven business case for our systems. And very frequently, the, the returns on investment that we see are, are in the weeks and months. They're, they're really um, typically quite, quite a very good payback period, quite a very good return on investment. But it, it gives customers uh, a lot of comfort to be able to express where that's going to come from. And it also helps to close the loop so that when a, a system is deployed, uh, we can de identify whether it was successfully deployed or not based on what we were expecting to happen. So a benefits analysis is something we can help with right at the very beginning. The other thing we can help with is KPI development. Now, KPI development really is about setting goalposts. It's about setting um, a mutual expectation or a common expectation on the part of whoever is working at a mine um, around what the, what the goals are and how they're going to be measured. So typically those goals would come from, from corporate, from a, a higher level, and they would cascade down to, to impact the goals that are particular to uh, the mining superintendent, the maintenance superintendent, and uh, the mining and maintenance 
organizations. Uh, so we have a, a structured approach for articulating those goals, and we would typically split those into success, progress, and analysis indicators. We would go through a process where we would identify any KPIs that, or any goals that didn't have KPIs, uh, and then document this, this hierarchical structure or this goal tree. So the, the deliverables in this case would be a, a documented set of goals and KPIs, uh, but a lot of the value really is the shared experience of whoever goes through this workshop um, getting their expectations aligned and, and achieving a common understanding of what the goals are and what the KPIs are. So that can actually help drive uh, configuration of things like reports uh, and can drive configuration of the information flows that are sitting on top of the technology in a fleet management system. Further along, another service that we offer is business process mapping. Uh, so once you've got your goals in place, uh, it, it then becomes pretty important to make sure that everyone has a common understanding of what their job is and where they fall in the processes to achieve these goals. So we would start by establishing inputs and outputs. Uh, very often our, our systems don't exist in a vacuum. They're, they're downstream of a mine planning system and upstream of a processing system. And they, they're interacting constantly with some kind of warehousing or ERP system as well. Uh, so we would define process inputs and outputs and then typically define the, the before picture of processes, how things are done now, uh, we, and then reviewing this with all the people that are involved, we would then come up with the, the after picture or the, the improved process map. And doc, this set of documents uh, is a great set of inputs to a change management activity, uh, but it, much like the KPI development process, uh, the, a large part of the value is for the people who are involved with the workshops, getting them all to have a, a common understanding of whose role is what, whose responsibility is what. And the end result of this process, the deliverables, is a set of process maps and RACI maps. So defining what the process steps are, the sequence and order, and also defining who's responsible, who's accountable, who should be consulted, and who should be informed for each of these steps. So this, these process mapping artifacts also come in handy in a year or two or three once some turnover has occurred, uh, people get promoted, people move on. Uh, these process maps allow new people coming in to have a, a good understanding and to, to buy into that common understanding of what their job role is and how they interact with the rest of the system. So that's what we do for process mapping. Another service that we offer is something called haulage simulation. Now, our dispatch system includes or works off of a digital model of the mine. So we, we have a digital representation of all the locations, all the roads, uh, the distances, the dig rates, uh, all the operators, all the equipment characteristics. That high fidelity mine model uh, is used to make real-time decisions, but we can also use that model and the history of that model to make what-if decisions as well. Uh, so typically, we would look at things like uh, fleet expansions, truck shovel matching. Uh, so a, a typical question is, if I add five more trucks, does that push me beyond the, the point of diminishing returns for truck productivity? Um, we can look at uh, mine layouts, where to, where to locate shift change, refueling, or meal break facilities. And the distinguishing characteristic with our haulage simulation versus, let's say, something like Telpac or uh, doing something in a spreadsheet is we're actually able to integrate real events that happen. So whether they're meal break events or downtime events uh, or the true travel speeds that occur around intersections or due to congestion. Uh, so because we've got down to the second real-time data about what happened in the past, uh, the model that we use for simulation is, is really about the highest fidelity model you can get when you're trying to predict the future. So haulage simulation is a is another service that we offer. When it comes to rolling out a, a big technology project, and, and certainly something like a dispatch system or a mine care maintenance management system is, is a big project. It's like an ERP system. Uh, the service we offer to facilitate that is something we call change management. 
and change management really is just about achieving buy-in. It's about it's not about teaching people how to use the system. It's about getting them to want to use the system. And most people really want to do their jobs, but uh, sometimes no one tells them what their job is or, or no one tells them why these great big technology changes are taking place. So what we do is we follow a very structured process whereby we, we gather feedback initially from the workforce. And based on that feedback, we're able to develop a tailored communication plan that addresses the specific questions people have um, and addresses it in a way that people can understand. So the even more so than just awareness building, uh, one of the key things that a change management program uh, encourages or, or establishes is a, a program of sponsorship. Uh, that's something that I would say is done, on average, is not done that well for some technology projects. Uh, having a very structured, thought out sponsorship effort uh, is a big part of making change management work. And what we see a lot with change management is after the initial communication process, um, some a large percentage of people have gotten the message or bought in, uh, but we will continue to monitor people's reactions and then identify who needs some extra work or who needs some extra coaching. Um, so through that process, we can overcome resistance uh, and basically bring forward the benefits that would otherwise take longer to achieve. System audits are something we would do probably if you had been running a system for a period of years, one or two years at least, uh, but we can do them any time. And what we do with audits, the, the main focus really is on data integrity. When you're using a mine management system to make production decisions uh, or for reporting, it, it's very important that the model is valid and accurately reflects reality. And the way we can validate that is by looking at the data integrity, by comparing uh, what we think is happening with what's actually happening. And we have a very well-developed set of metrics around the, the haulage cycle, around the out-of-cycle events to establish what the data integrity level is. And based on what we've seen at other mines, we can, we can compare that and say you're, explain where you are relative to best practice. So data integrity is really one of the first things we would do with a system audit. Once we've validated that your monitoring tool is, is in tune, uh, we can then look at some of the other configuration parameters. Very often, things like the optimization parameters or the system configurations are, are appropriate at the time of an installation, but over one or two or three years, uh, the business objectives of the mine will change. Uh, so we're able to adjust the configuration for those new realities. And the, the last thing we do in a system audit is not a technical thing. We really look at the people side. So what are the processes in place to support the system? Um, how are the dispatchers using the system? How are the field supervisors interacting with the system and with the dispatchers? Basically uh, looking at the business processes surrounding the system. So that's what we would do for a system audit. And really, all of these services uh, provide a collection of tools for continuous improvement. Uh, we've got people who are, are certified in Lean, and most of our workforce is certified in Six Sigma as well. So whether you're looking to eliminate waste in your, your workflows or whether you're looking to reduce variability, uh, we've got people with the training and the expertise to, to help do that. So it's... Uh I'll hand yeah, it over to Andrew. Gonna, yeah. No worries. Yeah. Uh, at this point, I'm going to pull up a poll and um, and go ahead and get some responses to this. So one of the one of the things that Chris pulled up is the um, the concept of simulation. And so I guess what's interesting to us is is where would simulation help your mind most? Would you see simulation helping in the road design, traffic management? Uh, Fleet, match, fleet matching, uh, simulating the, the shift change. And, and if somewhere other, uh, please we encourage you to, to go ahead and, and toss that response in the, uh, in the chat window. We're always curious to see where that, uh, that concept could be used. Give that a couple seconds while those come in. Getting a couple responses in. We won't take up a ton of time on this, and 
Uh, as we're waiting for this to come in, I'll remind you as we start with the case studies, please feel free to ask any questions. Just ask them in the chat feature below. And um, the ones that are particularly interesting, we'll hold back to the end of the conversation and we'll, um, we'll ask for those directly. I'm going to go ahead and close the poll now. And uh, traffic management uh, appears to be the winner, uh, as well as fleet matching and road design. So Chris, this time I'll turn it back over to you and we'll continue with the case studies. Thanks, Andrew. I've got three case studies. Uh, the first case study I was going to discuss was some work we did at an iron ore mine. Uh, this was a, a mine that had been running dispatch for, for over a decade, and they invited us to come in and do an audit of their system. They were experiencing, uh, they, they were convinced that the, the configuration wasn't quite right um, because they weren't getting very good results uh, as far as variability. Uh, it seemed like the dispatchers were very busy dealing with unexpected events. So the result of this audit process was that we were able to reduce the, the number of late exceptions by 80, about 80%. Uh, and what this meant was, A, the, the, dis, the data that was being captured was a much better reflection of what was actually happening in the mine, uh, and B, the, the dispatchers had much more time to investigate further what was going on. They, they, weren't, be they weren't being bombarded with these late exceptions to the extent that they were. Uh, so this allowed them to look a little deeper as far as configuring shovel priorities to look a little deeper at other upset events that, that really did merit their attention. Uh, so that was reducing late exceptions by 80% was a, a very significant positive outcome that really had some, some downstream effects to enable the mine to run in a more optimized fashion. Uh, another change that we recommended uh, was reducing the, the down codes at this mine. Uh, the list of down codes, the breakdown and, and planned down codes, had, had expanded over time to over 468 codes. Uh, so we looked at, reviewed that list of codes and consolidated that down to a list of about 80 down codes, uh, which was, while still a large number, was, was certainly a lot more manageable um, when, when it came to tracking equipment downtime. The other recommendations we made were centered around demand-based refueling. Prior to the system audit, uh, this mine was actually just refueling on the basis of equipment hours. Um, and equipment hours didn't necessarily mean the truck had been working, uh, driving up a ramp, burning a lot of fuel. So we did the work to configure the, uh, the fuel burn rates for these trucks. And this allowed the mine to, to use, in some cases, trucks will report uh, a fuel level directly. Uh, we can measure it directly off an OEM system. Uh, sometimes those, those trucks don't have a direct fuel measurement system, and we're able to perform a kind of dead reckoning or inferred, we can infer the level of fuel based on the duty cycle of the truck. Uh, so by setting the system up, the mine was able to shift from refueling uh, every X number of operating hours to refueling when the trucks actually needed it. And by reducing the number of refueling events, that freed up more truck hours for productive haulage. So those were three specific improvements that we made as through the course of this system audit at this iron ore mine. Second case study was change management at a coal mine uh, over in Australia. This was, again, a, a mine that had had a system in place for, for over 10 years, a dispatch system, and they had really kind of lost the knowledge around running unlocked and lost their, their belief in the optimized haulage process. And through a, a combination of services, we actually first did a, uh, uh, conducted an audit on their system. We conducted a simulation in order to quantify the expected benefits. Uh, and then we were involved in, in quite a thorough change management effort, working with field supervisors, working with operators, working with the mine planning engineers to make the necessary process changes to allow them to use haulage optimization. And the end result of this was about a 75% reduction in truck queue at the coal hopper, and this corresponded to around 650 additional truck hours in a month. Uh, so this was effectively an extra truck worth of productive time that was available or made available purely as a result of these process changes and of change management. So no extra hardware, uh, but an extra truck's worth of productivity was unlocked through this process. Third case study is a process mapping exercise we conducted uh, at an oil sands mine. 
Uh, this was a greenfield site that was just starting up, and we worked with people on their operations and maintenance departments. And we defined about 12 key processes around things like um, the, the handover of equipment from operations to maintenance, around refueling, around how operators were to log on, uh, we, and spelled out in detail who had to do what um, in, in each of these scenarios. So these process maps then were available for training, uh, and they were available for the change management effort that followed. So these are three different examples of places where we've applied these services to, to real customers around the world. And the kind of feedback we're getting so far is good feedback. Uh, feedback like best project rollout I've seen at this mine in a long time, uh, wins on the board are a testament to the process followed and the involvement of all groups impacted. So we've had some really good uh, customer feedback from these engagements. Summarize, our key competitive advantage really is our deep product expertise. The fact that we're very close to the data, we know exactly where to go and find information, and if we can't find it, uh, we can set things up to go and get some more. We've got global exposure to problems arising all around the world, and we've got capacity deployed at each of our regional offices to go and solve these problems. So this combination of uh, competitive advantages and our commitment to customer satisfaction means we're able to help make the best better. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Um, go ahead and open it up to questions. I'm, I'm actually going to start off with a question of my own. Uh, seeing this slide earlier, the different quotes, uh, just a question, who are the most difficult to reach groups uh, in your change management efforts within a mine? I'd say it's, it's different at, uh, at, every, um, at every mine. Uh, we do run into some mines that have, uh, let's say, an older workforce. Uh, so people who've been driving a truck and doing the same thing the same way for 25 years, uh, they're, they're, needless to say, very set in their ways. Um, so very often they're probably the, the toughest, toughest nuts to crack, sort of the, the, a 60-year-old truck operator um, who's near retirement uh, is not that interested in interacting with a screen or uh, doing, I guess, what they perceive as extra work. So the number of people that don't have to interact with technology is, is really dwindling, um, but we still run into some, some people like that. Um, most, most operators, most people working at mines are trying to do the right thing. They're, they're willing to work with whatever tools you put in front of them, and they're, trying, they're, they're motivated to do a great job. Um, but we, we still run into some people that, that just um, technology is just not for them. Sure, sure understood. Um, another question, you know, regarding the cost and engagement, see if I can paraphrase maybe around what, what is the typical, say, return on investment or, or payback period for one of these services? Well, it's going to be different. Uh, you know, every mine is a different scale, is a different set of problems. Uh, I mean, typically our, our services cost, you know, on the order of tens of thousands of dollars, and the value that we can unlock is going to be in the hundreds or millions. Uh, and usually, that that's operating costs as well. So it's a recurring value that, that you're achieving. Uh, so it's a payback period that's measured in, in weeks or months. It's not years, uh, and it's, it goes right to the bottom of the line because it's not a, it's not a capital investment. It, it comes right off of operating costs. Um, so it's, uh, it's different every time, but it's, it's significant. Like if, you, if you're trying to do a business case for whether to do it or not, uh, usually it jumps right to the head of the, of the, the project pipeline. Sure, sure. Uh, another question coming in? Uh, around around benchmarks uh, and and what is usually the the benchmarks you see what, what's the usual gap between you know productivity that's possible and and what's actually achieved in the mines that you've worked with let's see that's a tough one um, in general uh, I'd say the 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 tendency is for mines to just over truck things the, they'll just as a kind of a cheap and well, a, a short-term cheap insurance policy, uh, mines will over truck uh, just just in case. Uh, and what we see is uh, we actually can get more productivity out of the same haulage fleet uh, by slightly under trucking the mine uh, because we're then able to to make much better use of our optimization algorithm um, and by freeing up trucks for 
opportune maintenance or, or have freeing up trucks that are standby, we can actually redeploy those resources to more productive shovels. Uh, so um, in general, I, I would say the tendency is to, to, to be a little bit lazy and over truck things, but if you've got real-time control over what's happening, um, that, that's really where dispatch comes into its own, uh, in that you can, you can evaluate things as they change and make numbers-based decisions on what to do next, rather than just kind of throwing a little extra in just in case. Great. Very interesting. Very interesting. Looks like we've, we've just about reached the end of our, our time. Uh, a few more questions have come in that we'll respond to by, by email or follow up directly. Uh, to everyone who's attended, I appreciate you taking the time. I, I know for some of you it's early in the morning, some of you uh, late in the evening. Chris, thank you for joining us, and uh, again, we appreciate your time as well. My pleasure. Thank you.